Good morning and welcome back to the new forest. Well this is the uh, September October update of the uh, video diary showing some of the things that have been going on over the past couple of months. We've got some guest contributors this time too with some uh, fascinating stuff so uh, look out for that. Well, let's go and see what's been going on. After a damp and disappointing July and August the kids went back to school at the beginning of September then the sun came out and we had some glorious weather. You might recall in the last diary that we saw the fallow deer growing their antlers, which were covered in a velvety coat. Towards the end of summer, the blood supply to the velvet is cut off, and the deer rub the velvet covering off of their antlers in readiness for the rut. More of that later. Annette Gregory captured these images of some fallow deer bucks whilst they were in the midst of rubbing off the velvet. Looks pretty gruesome, doesn't it? But it's not thought to be painful, more an itch. Early in September, Keith Mantle came across this grass snake sunbathing in a gorse bush. If we look closely, we can see that its eye is cloudy. This is a sign that the snake is about to slough its skin. Snakes slough their skin several times a year and the covering of the eye comes off with the rest of the skin. Do you know what this is? It's about 10 centimetres long. That's about four inches in old money. It's already spent up to five years living in a tree trunk. It's looking for a suitable place to pupate on the ground, wrapping itself in a soil cocoon. Next year, it'll look like this. It's a goat moth. It gets its name from the musky goat-like smell of the caterpillar. Adults are on the wing in June and July. Look for them in woodland, near oak and ash trees, but you'll need a keen eye to spot them. Marion Nesbitt captured these wonderful pictures of wasp spiders. It's a risky business being a male wasp spider. After mating, the much larger female is very likely to have him for her lunch. This little one was one of the luckier ones, and after mating with the much larger female, he made good his escape. Once her eggs have been fertilised, the female constructs a beautiful flask-like sack in which her spiderlings will hatch and spend the winter, emerging the following spring. Their mother won't live to see them though, as, with her life's purpose fulfilled, she dies in the autumn. The first misty mornings arrived in mid-September. Autumn's on its way. Autumn means the fungi season. There are about 2,700 recorded species of fungi in the new forest, which makes the forest one of the most important fungi habitats in the country. We're all familiar with the fungi shaped like mushrooms, of various shapes, sizes and colours. Some are edible, some are poisonous, a few could kill you. Many of the fungi that we can see are tiny. Here's a small tree stump with fungi growing on it. If I put my finger next to one of the fungi, we can see how small it is. This is a yellow stag's horn fungus, also known as a jelly antler fungus. Although these are tiny, they've been known to grow up to about 10 centimetres tall. Here are some other small fungi to look out for. These are ink caps. See how quickly they grow, and then they're gone. October overall was very mild, but we had some heavy rain on some days. This fungi was growing well one day. The next day, we had one of the days with heavy storms. Most of the fungi growth didn't survive. In early October, Lyndhurst held its annual Scarecrow Festival to raise money for local charities. A map showed where all the scarecrows could be found, and it was an extremely popular family event, helped by some glorious sunny weather all weekend. This is a selection of the scarecrows that we saw. Many of them were very creative.
The winning entry was this one, the Lyndhurst Tug of War team, which was really well done. Tina Dunning came upon this in October, an apple. Yes, it's an apple, but it's what's sitting on top of the apple that's important. It's an Asian hornet. It's an extremely aggressive predator, and a colony of Asian hornets can kill off a hive of honeybees in hours. The first Asian hornet's nest in Hampshire was found in 2018. If you see one, you should notify the authorities. There's a government app to do this called Asian Hornet Watch. I've added details about that in the text below. This is the rutting season for the red deer, the seeker deer and the fallow deer. These pictures of the red deer by Annette Gregory beautifully capture the rut in progress with a dominant stag fighting off the challengers to his harem. This is a fallow buck with his ladies. I actually filmed this last year, but I thought it was worth another airing. The younger or weaker fallow bucks that don't have any does tend to hang around together near the main gathering, hoping to lure one of the does away from the dominant bucks. Sometimes their luck's in. Autumn is the time of year when the acorns fall from the oak trees. The ponies and the donkeys are quick to eat the acorns, but eating too many of them can cause problems for the animals. They don't make the pigs ill though, and so the pigs are let out onto the forest in the autumn to eat many of the acorns, to prevent the other animals from eating too many. About 600 pigs of all sizes were let out this year. This is called the Panage, and is a new forest tradition that goes all the way back to the time of William the Conqueror, almost a thousand years. The last days of October were showery, but still mild. Last year I hardly saw any holly berries on the bushes. As October drew to a close this year, there were loads of holly berries on most of the female holly trees. Good for the birds. The holly berries and the golden brown bracken is an early reminder that Christmas is coming. The next new forest video diary will be uploaded at the end of December. Come back next time to see what happened at the end of the year. Please subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching.